To build one of the most powerful storms on Earth, you only need three ingredients. Intense heat, a vast ocean, and a spinning planet. Get this recipe just right and you don't get a storm. You create a monster. Hurricane, cyclone, typhoon. What's the difference? Surprisingly, nothing. They're all the same kind of storm, a tropical cyclone. The only difference is where it's born. Call it a hurricane in the Atlantic and Northeast Pacific, a cyclone in parts of the Indian Ocean. They call it Willy Willy in Australia, and here in the Northwest Pacific, we know it as a typhoon. But to understand how one forms, we start not in the clouds, but down here at the ocean surface. It all begins with one magic number, 26.5 degrees Celsius. That's the trigger. Once the ocean reaches this temperature, not just at the surface, but several meters deep, the air above it starts to change. Warm water evaporates quickly, loading the air with water vapor. That vapor makes the air lighter, and suddenly it starts racing upward. But here's the fun part. Every bit of air that rises leaves emptiness behind, a low-pressure area. And this empty space, nature hates that. So air rushes in, the cycle repeats, and the engine starts humming. But hold up, rising air alone doesn't make a beast. It needs power. As warm air climbs, it cools and vapor turns into droplets, building tall storm clouds. And here's the key. When vapor condenses into droplets, it releases latent heat, the hidden burst of energy that powers all tropical cyclones. This extra heat supercharges the air around it, making it rise even faster. More rising air means more condensation, which means more heat, which means even stronger rising air. It becomes a self-feeding loop of heat, wind, and moisture. But right now, it's still just a chaotic blob of thunderstorms. No organization, no direction, no identity. To evolve into a real cyclone, it needs one final ingredient. Rotation. And this is where Earth quietly nudges the storm. The Coriolis effect. Air rushing inward gets curved, a gentle twist that transforms chaos into a spiral. Counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, clockwise in the southern. But here's the catch. This effect is too weak at the equator, so storms skip this region. They form only in that sweet spot between 5 degrees and 30 degrees north or south of the equator. Guess what sits right in that zone? Yep, the Northwest Pacific, the planet's typhoon factory. Once rotation clicks in, the storm begins leveling up. Tropical depression. The engine's on, but the structure is sloppy. Thunderstorms compete and the center is weak. Winds below 62 km an hour. Tropical storm. Things snap into place. A clear center forms. It becomes organized enough to earn a name. Winds reach 62 to 88 km an hour. From here, it can level up into a severe tropical storm, a more intense version of the same system with winds of 89 to 117 kilometers an hour. And finally, it reaches its ultimate form, the typhoon. When winds exceed 118 kilometers an hour, the structure becomes symmetrical. The heat engine reaches full power. The storm is fully alive, organized, dangerous. Some don't stop there. They become super typhoons, winds blasting past 185 kilometers an hour. These are the giants, the record breakers. Once fully grown, a typhoon has three parts, each one critical to its power. Rain bands, long curved arms that feed the storm. They pull warm, moist air inward and dump heavy rain across huge areas. They are the storm's fuel lines. Eye wall, the powerhouse. Here, air is forced upward with incredible force. As vapor condenses, it releases massive latent heat, and that heat drives the storm's strongest winds. This part is the storm's true engine room. 
I. Right at the center, the eerie calm. Air sinks, clouds vanish, skies clear. Almost peaceful despite chaos surrounding it. A typhoon runs on a beautifully organized loop. Warm moist air in through the rain bands, up through the eye wall, spreads out across the top, then sinks as dry air down through the eye. This cycle keeps the storm alive and makes it one of the most powerful natural engines on Earth. Now comes the real question, why us? Why the Philippines? Short answer, location, and timing. Long answer, we live beside the Pacific Warm Pool, one of Earth's hottest oceans. A constant supply of heat and moisture, perfect fuel for powerful storms. All summer, the sun charges this water like a giant battery. By July, the tank is full and any storm drifting in gets supercharged. But heat isn't enough. The atmosphere has to play along. Early summer, wind shear is high. These are strong upper level winds that can tear a baby storm apart before it ever forms an eye. And the ITZZ, the storm breeding belt of low pressure, sits too far below the equator. Warm, yes, but the storms struggle to survive. Then July flips the switch, wind shear drops, the ITZZ shifts north and parks right over us, loading the sky with heat, moisture, and low pressure. Suddenly, the atmosphere becomes a workshop for building superstorms. And when they're built, trade winds deliver them straight toward our doorstep. The Pacific gives them time to grow, strengthen, and sometimes explode into super typhoons. So here's the recipe for a disaster we never asked for. Take a hot ocean, add a spark of low pressure, ignite the latent heat engine, give it a spin thanks to our rotating planet, let it intensify over the endless Pacific, and you get a typhoon. And for us in the Philippines, we're sitting right on the delivery route for almost every single one. And that's how a typhoon is born. But understanding the storm is only the beginning. Next time, we'll dive into the journeys these systems take. We'll track their paths across the Philippine area of responsibility and how landforms and seas can weaken or intensify a typhoon. <music>